In today's video, I'm going to be covering the Shelly 2.5 relays. I'm going to show you what's in the box, how to install them, and how to get them added to Home Assistant. Now, I know, I know, the 2.5 is discontinued. That just goes to show you how far behind I am on my smart home projects. The replacement for it is the Shelly Plus 2PM, and the wiring for that is the exact same as the 2.5. They just moved a couple of terminals around, so be sure to pay careful attention to the locations of switch control connections on that one. Otherwise, they're pretty much the exact same units. As always, the standard disclaimer applies that if you're not comfortable working on electrical stuff, please hire a qualified professional. I am not a qualified professional, and this video is not meant to take the place of actual real world knowledge. No warranty, no guarantee, no fitness for purpose, all that other legal mumbo jumbo. Wire at your own risk. Now, with that out of the way, let's get started. Hi, and welcome. I'm Jeff with Fast How To. Well, for now anyway, I'm still on the hunt for a new name for the channel. I've gotten a lot of really great ideas from you guys so far, but nothing that's made me jump up and scream, aha! If you know what I mean. So if you've got a great idea, drop it in the comments. If I pick your name, I'll send you some cool smart home gear. Of course, offer valid only to residents of the continental United States, shipping costs, export laws, different electrical requirements, yada, yada, yada. Now, I ordered a two pack of these off Amazon in November of 2022, according to my Amazon order history. Honestly, it's a wonder I didn't lose them by now, but hey, here we are, and here they are. In the box, we've got a small slip with the QR code for the app. We've got two Shelly relays. Nice little piece of foam that held them up. And we've got the instruction sheet that shows us how to get them set up. These can be used to control two separate circuits from a single unit, which is why I bought them. I've got a three gang box upstairs where I'd like to be able to control two of the switches in that box. Now I know, I know, some of you longtime followers are sitting there wondering, but I thought you were madly in love with CASA. Why are you using these? And that's a great question. I'm using these for what I imagine to be a pretty common reason that many of you might also want to use a Shelly for. Because there are no smart switches that fit the decor where I need to control these lights, namely my kitchen. Nobody makes a black smart switch, or at least not that I've seen yet. So before we head upstairs and install them, let's take a quick look at the tools I'm going to be using. Now, links to all this stuff will be found in the description, of course. First up, you're going to need some wire cutters. These are Gardner Bender, and they were like 15 bucks. They're real high quality. Nice. I love them. Next, you're going to need some wire strippers. These Klein ones are awesome for $20, and they're spring-loaded, which makes them super easy to use. You'll need a non-contact voltage alert tester. These are super important to make sure there's no other live wires in a box. Never! Trust that all the power is off simply because the one light that you want to work on doesn't turn on. There could be other wires in that box or other circuits. This one here, made by Fluke, is pretty nice for 34 bucks, but Ideal makes some good ones too that are a few bucks less. You'll need a couple different sizes of wire nuts, and the different sizes are going to depend on the number of wires that you need to connect. And you'll also want some electrical tape, and a few different screwdrivers, Flathead and Phillips. You'll want a couple of feet of wire that you can use to make pigtails. Uh, I just cut this for some leftovers I had in the basement. Uh, the white is uh, 14 gauge and the yellow is 12 gauge. I just grabbed some of both because I'm working in the kitchen uh, where everything should be 12 gauge, but I didn't build the house and I can't remember what was in there when I replaced the switches a couple years ago. so. Uh, I just grabbed both of these so that I didn't have to make another trip up and down the stairs. I'm lazy like that. But, I mean, this is a smart house, right? We're all kind of lazy. We want to automate everything instead of getting up to push the button. You're also going to want some kind of headlamp. 
They make all kinds of crazy expensive ones and all kinds of crazy cheap ones too, but I find that this Energizer one for 26 bucks gets the job done without too much trouble. Uh, it runs on AAA batteries, it's water resistant, so I can use it on the boat too. And the reason you need these is because the power is gonna be out when you're doing this, so it'll be dark. Lastly, you'll want a razor knife to remove the sheath from those wires so that you can get the individual wires to make your pigtails. I really like this one here by Cat. It's like the switchblade of razor knives. No, but really, it, it's for safety. If it slips out of your hand, it won't cut you or the floor or the counter or anything else like that. Uh, it's also got a lock, so you can throw it in your pocket without having to worry about it popping out at you. It's 12 bucks. All right, let's head upstairs to the kitchen and get these things installed. Then we'll come back down here to the desk and get them added to Home Assistant and all set up. Prior to getting started, let's take a look at the wiring diagram for how to install these. I'm able to show you this diagram because of the generosity of Robert from The Hookup. If you've not watched his channel, you really should. Great content. I'll leave a link in the description to the blog article where this image came from, as well as a link to his channel. Anyhow, for the install that I did, we can omit the left hand light and switch. Just pretend those don't exist. The wire on the bottom of this diagram is the line wire, meaning it provides power to the fixtures. The other end of that wire heads back to your breaker panel. Now inside that jacket, the black wire is line voltage and the white wire is neutral. Assuming that presently the only thing in the J box is a single light switch that you want to be able to control with this Shelly relay, and assuming that it's wired in typical fashion, like what you'll see in the video coming up here, you're going to need three pieces of black wire and one piece of white wire. The incoming line wire will go into the wire knot shown here, and then you'll need a piece of black wire for here, here, and here. The piece of white wire that you'll need will go here. Let's break down all the connections and what they are. Starting from the far right on the Shelly, we have the neutral wire labeled N. In the US, this is usually white, but you should never take anything for granted. Left of that, we have the load side of the light switch labeled SW1 on the Shelly. Next to that is O1 or output 1. This is the hot wire going to your load. In the diagram, that's the light bulb on the right. To the left of that, labeled L, is line. First, you need to shut off the breaker for the circuits you're going to be working on. I did that off camera. Then, remove the faceplate that covers the light switch. Next, grab your non-contact voltage tester and make sure there's no power in the box before you start taking things apart. Remove the switch from the box, and then I always test again. I'm kind of a belt and suspenders type of guy when it comes to safety. Remove the line and load wires from the switch. I happen to know which is which based on the direction that they're coming into the box, but if you don't know that, you'll need to figure it out since it does matter when wiring the Shelly. I've removed the ground from the switch just to get the switch out of the way, left to put it back on later. Now I'm just straightening the line wire so that I can put a wire nut on it and trimming the load wire so that it fits into the Shelly. Tighten that up, and then we'll add the load side of the switch and get that tightened. Then we need to connect the line wire to the line side of the switch and the line side of the Shelly. Next, we need to connect the neutral from the Shelly. Then we'll reconnect the ground to the switch, tighten that up good, and then put a wrap of electrical tape around the switch to cover the terminals. There's the fully wired Shelly. Then we'll shove the whole works back into the box. Screw it in, 
put the faceplate back on, and go add it to Home Assistant. All right, so I just got finished installing those two Shelleys upstairs in the kitchen. Uh, I ran into a little bit of an issue. First, I did only record the installation of one of them, and I have not yet reviewed that footage. So hopefully it doesn't come out too bad. And if it did, I apologize for that. We'll see what happens in post. But it was hard, right? No, no power up there. I couldn't use any of my lighting. So the only light I had was the, the headlight that I was using. And I tried to set the camera ISO and stuff. But we'll see how it came out. Anyway, the other issue that I ran into was the reason that I bought the 2.5s was because I wanted to control two switches from the same relay. As it turns out, in that three gang box, there were three different circuits. Yeah. And you cannot bridge circuits on Shelly, meaning you can't have the line from two different circuits going into that single device. So I only used one leg on that three gang box, and I'm going to have to order some other Shelly's. I could have got some cheaper ones, apparently. I could have just got some ones. But live and learn. In any event, let's take a look at how to get these set up. Now, I did do a couple of things in advance. I updated the firmware on them, which I will show you, but uh, some, some stuff to save some time, basically. After I got those Shelly's installed, though, I just installed the app on my phone. There's a QR code in the instructions. Signed up for an account, and then added them to my Wi-Fi. Super easy following the instructions that were included with them. Trust me. Anybody can do it. It's very, very easy. But once you get those added, then go and look up the IP addresses for them in your DHCP server or in your router. Uh, I use Unify equipment, so it's very, very easy to find them. I just cut the MAC address of them and then looked it up on my Unify gear and then created a DHCP reservation for them so that they're always using the same IP address. And now let's get into exactly what we need to do to get these things set up. So first off, put the IP address of one of your Shelly's into a web browser, and you'll be presented with a screen that looks similar to this. You need to go to Settings, and then Firmware Update. Like I said, I updated mine off camera just to save us a little bit of time, but go ahead and install that. It takes about five minutes, uh, but you'll definitely want to do that. Then under Internet and Security, go down to Advanced Developer Settings. Ensure that uh, co-IoT is enabled. And then for the co-IoT peer, change that to be the IP address of your home assistant server, colon 5683. And then save that. And after you save that, you need to restart. So go back over to settings and click device reboot. And then it'll reboot. So I've already gone through that process on both of the Shelly's that I installed upstairs already. So let's get into Home Assistant and see what it takes to add these. So it looks like they've been auto-discovered. Sweet. All right, so this is the MAC address for these. So you're gonna need a MAC address as well. That is written on the Shelly's themselves. You can get that, it's on the little sticker before you put them in the wall, or you can get that out of your DHCP server. So BCAF, I know, is the under cabinet lighting for my coffee bar. Yeah, we need to rename this. All right, so now we've got our two devices added. Let's go ahead and add these to the dashboard. So in the kitchen, All right, so we'll just grab this.
There we go. Kitchen sink lights. There we go. And this will be coffee bar under cabinet lights. All right, get those added to our dashboard. There we go, all set. Easy, right? Do me a solid and whack that subscribe button. Ring the little bell to be notified every time I upload a new video, or better yet, head on over to my Patreon page where you can watch videos before I post them to YouTube and they don't have any advertisements in them. There is a link in the description, or you can just scan this QR code right here. Patrons get access to all sorts of exclusive benefits, such as downloadable code from all my videos, periodic copies of my full dashboard, configuration, and automation YAML files, entry into exclusive giveaways, free t-shirts, and much more. Benefits start for as little as three US bucks per month, so stop on by, help out the channel, and get some cool stuff in return. I hope that you enjoyed today's video, and I hope that I was able to accomplish my goal of teaching you all about these Shelly Relays. I look forward to seeing all your smiling faces in the next video, and until then, go automate something, will ya?